I wish I had not lived to be this poor. To live to this age and see my fellow Malayans kill each other, it saddens me. This is not what I planned for my country. I would rather have died than having to see all this. And he cried. He says, I'm sorry, I can't continue this interview. He was genuine. He was genuine. He was heartbroken. And until he died, yeah? Until he died, he refused to speak to Dr. Mahade. I know because we organized a birthday party for him. I think it was his 80th birthday party. And uh, 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 Dr. Mahade was already Prime Minister. So <clears throat> we did a fundraising, yeah? Uh, <clears throat> we invited all the tycoons, the Tauke Tauke. And we started the Tuku Abdul Rahman Law Chair in New Zealand, Malaya. And we wanted to raise a million, this is 30 years ago. We wanted to raise a million to finance the, <clears throat> the Law Chair under Tuku's name. And we did it for his birthday. Of course, we had to invite the Prime Minister. If you don't invite the Prime Minister, all these Tauke Tauke will not come. You know, these Tauke, they only flock with where there's power, there's money to be made. <coughs> so to attract the Tauke, we invited the Prime Minister, and there was Dr. Mahade, and there was <coughs> Tunku Rahman, and Tunku Rahman refused to look at Dr. Mahade, you know. And even uh, <coughs> when uh, we brought his cake for him to blow the candles, he blew up the candles and he still refused to look at Dr. Mahathir. So we knew. He was publicly uh, <coughs> rebuking uh, Dr. Mahathir. So he never forgave Dr. Mahathir until the day he died, until the day he went to his grave, you know. Because he felt, Tengku felt, that Malaya was messed up. And he was messed up by these Amno politicians who played politics using race, religion, and all these other issues, yeah? Now, <clears throat> I want to read just one paragraph. The Memoirs of Mustafa Hussein, 1910 to 1957, Malay nationalism before Amnon. Just one paragraph. I cried along with them as memories of my bitter and grueling experiences came flooding back, he recalls. Involved in World War II as a Malay fifth colonist, detained in several police lockups and prisons, taunted and jeered by Malays who saw me hawking food on the roadside. He was selling nasi lemak in Kampung Baru. So, you know, those from KL probably know where is Kampung Baru. He was selling nasi lemak in Kampung Baru. Uh, <clears throat> who saw me hawking food on the roadside, humiliated by people who slammed their doors in my face, asked me to leave my rented cubicle in the middle of the night to the chase out, and even labeled as the Malay who brought the Japanese into Malaya. Now, this was because he was negotiating with the Japanese on how to get Mandeka. But this negotiation was in 1945. Amno said that the negotiations was in 1957 or leading to 1957. Which means there's a 12-year difference between when people like Mustafa Hussein wanted Badeka <coughs> to the time he actually got Badeka, 12 years. Now, if Amno recognizes people like Mustafa Hussein, Ibrahim Yako, Pak Sako, and all this, if Amno recognizes these people as a real pejuang Badeka, the fighters for Badeka, Amno's legitimacy gone. Amno cannot claim to be the fighters for Madeka anymore. And how do you therefore explain the 
the history, the so-called history that we have been presented with, how Amma was from 46 to fight for Merdeka, blah, 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 blah. All that did not happen. All that is a fantasy. Now, when Amma realized, or certain people in Amma realized, that the direction Malaya was going, the Tenkuraman, the direction Malaya was going was towards a more multiracial and less Islamic direction. They had to stop it and bring it back this way to a more radical, ultra-religious direction. And that was the 10 years up to 69, from 59 to 69, when they started planning this, came the eruption 1969, then the new, the young Turks came in, grabbed power, and that was the beginning of the end for our national unity. From that day onwards, both sides of the political fence played race, religion, Royalty, Ketuanan Royu, Article 153, Dasai etc., etc., etc. And they made sure that they continued the British policy. And what was the British policy? Divide and rule. And we can divide all these different races, we can rule over them. You think all these Pakatan people and uh, Barisan people, you think they really hate each other? <coughs> Have you seen them in Parliament? They'll be patting each other on the back, hugging each other, ha 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 ha, laughing, you know? They're okay. It's all a big wayang. <laughs> Outside there, they'll say all sorts of things. Inside Parliament, all those of kaki lang. <laughs> <laughs> and here, here we, the Rakyat, we are divided. We curse each other, we scream at each other, we threaten to kill each other. And in the meantime, all these politicians and balance and they put them to power. The three R's race, religion, royalty. These are the tools of the opposition, the tools from both sides of the political divide. They are going to use this, they are sharpening it and using it, and they are going to either win or use or lose election with this. It has been getting worse over the last few years. <clears throat> I'm 62 years old. In 1969, I was 18, going on 19. I was born in 1950. I was on the ground. You know that demonstration they had in front of Kuru Jail, where they were to hang, what was it? I can't remember how many, seven or eight, I think, Chinese uh, prisoners were going to be hanged in Pudu Jail uh, for killing one warden. Is a Malay warden. All the wardens are Malay anyway. So there was a riot or a fight, and the warden got killed. Uh, and they wanted to hang. Hang is uh, seven or eight, I can't remember. Now. They wanted to hang these Chinese for murder. And there's a demonstration in front of Pudu Jail near Pudu. I went. There's a first time I got shot with tear gas, you know. Uh, <laughs> so at that age, 18, we were already exposed to politics. I attended all the Chanama, all over, Brickfields, Bangsa. My wife used to live in Brickfields. I lived in Bangsa next door. So I used to hang around there, go and listen to all the Chanama. Very fiery, uh, <clears throat> very racial. You know, people like from uh, Labour Party, we gave it one, Bangsa Brickfields, we had opposition one. And uh, the, you know, the, the drama they were given, Kita akan tangkap, akan kapal, 
Maya, you know, because that symbol was a sailing boat. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Jangan cerita hantar kita balik ke China atau India. Kita akan hantar mereka balik ke Indonesia. Kau tahu, saya ni back to China, India. We send them back to Indonesia. So there was the Bible story that left. Anything hantar kita show dia. And a couple of weeks later, the whole town exploded. Few other places as well. Now I'm seeing that now. You know. I'm seeing what I used to see back in 1969 when I was 18 years old. I'm seeing the same thing repeated, and it's not good. It's not good. We are testing each other's patience. We got the castle. We got all sorts of you know, and then we got that uh, in front of Amiga's house, you know. Backside of things. Eventually, 
maybe we can give the government two terms to this party and then the next two terms to the other party like here in the UK, 13 years, 15 years change government or whatever. But the politicians have to realize that ultimately we are the ones who are going to decide. And don't think that I'm pro Barisan or don't think that I'm pro Pakata. But as far as I'm concerned, you know, both, both you lots cannot be trusted. And uh, we should not be too fanatical about the political party. The political party is just a vehicle. It's like a car. We need to get from point A to point B, we need a car. Let's not be fanatical. If it breaks down, leave it. You know, what is important is that we don't become the tool of the politicians, but the politicians become our tool. And as long as we can, you know, we can accept that politics has to be cross-race and not racial, the politicians cannot manipulate us. But this is the problem. AMNO is Malay Party. MCA, Chinese Party. MIC, Indian Party. DAP, as much as it says it's a multiracial party, it is still a Chinese party. PASES is an Islamic party. It's still a Malay party. PKR, oh, we are the real, true, thoroughbred multiracial party. PKR is still Malay based party. 